In this video, I will be reviewing the findings of the PolyU experiment done by Nuremberg and Matai, as well as the Nuremberg and Letter experiment. Both of these experiments were pursued in order to determine the genetic code, aka determining what codons led to the development of certain amino acids. The left picture shows Nuremberg on the right and Matai on the left. The right picture is that of Philip Letter. In the PolyU experiment, they started it off by synthesizing a homopolymer, PolyU, which is an mRNA strand composed of strictly uracil nucleotides. They mix that with cell sap derived from E. coli bacteria through the process of rupturing its cell walls using a mortar and pestle. This allowed them to obtain its cytoplasmic contents. They then filled 20 test tubes, each with different amino acids, with one radioactively tagged by carbon-14 in order to detect the amino acid after the experiment was complete. In each round, a different amino acid was tagged in order to test each one. They then let translation take place, forming a polypeptide chain and then filtered out the solution, leaving a protein on the filter paper. They checked the filter paper to see if the protein was radioactive, and if it was, then that amino acid codes for that initial codon. That process was performed for all amino acids. The result was that the codon UUU codes for phenylalanine. This was continued with poly A, which coded for lysine, and poly C, which coded for proline. This experiment concluded that the specific sequence of codons code for a specific amino acid. The number of bases per codon pertaining to the genetic code was then thought to be in triplets, and this was initially proposed by George Gamow. The Nuremberg letter experiment ultimately deciphered which of the 64 codons code for each of the 20 amino acids. The process started by synthesizing mRNA with a known singular codon sequence. The mRNA was then placed in a mixture of ribosomes and tRNAs with an amino acid attached. There was one type of amino acid that was radioactively labeled. The ribosome binds to the mRNA sequence and the complement tRNA. This means that the amino acid bound to the tRNA is the amino acid that the mRNA sequence codes for. The solution is then filtered, leaving the ribosome bound mRNA on the filter. If the filter is radioactive, then that specific codon codes for that radioactive amino acid. They continued this process for two years, ultimately getting the remaining 61 codon sequences paired with their complementary amino acid. These discoveries allowed for the development and finality of this table.